Hi guys, so Heidi here. Thanks so much for watching. This tutorial is gonna show you how to draw pleats in Illustrator using some crazy simple tricks. Um, if you're drawing pleats manually, you're probably tearing your hair out. So let me show you some amazing shortcuts and hacks to do this in an automated way that will make your pleats perfect. All right, let's get started. If you haven't already, grab the free download file. The link should be below the video or maybe right on top of the video, depending on where you're watching this, but just find the link and grab the download. And let's talk about a couple different types of pleats really fast that we're going to work on. We're gonna do an accordion pleat, which is basically just, uh, I have pulled a couple of these images here off the internet. It's just sort of folded like an accordion. Um, we're also gonna do a knife pleat where the pleats are sort of um, folded in half on top of the, each of the next pleat, commonly seen in curtains or um, your very stereotypical knife pleat is gonna be like in a cheerleader skirt. But you see these in all sorts of um, skirts and details within garments. So. Let's get started here. What I've drawn first for the accordion pleat, um, I'm gonna actually turn my smart guides on. They're not on right now, but I wanna do this with my smart guides on. So I'm gonna come up under view, smart guides, commander control U is your shortcut. So we'll do that. And what I have here is just these two um, rectangular shapes that I drew. And I drew them very simply, again, using a rectangle. They're just really long, skinny and I drew two of them. So I'm just gonna grab my selection tool to make sure they're both the same size instead of um, drawing two separately. So with this one, I can hold the Option or Alt key on my keyboard to click and drag. And with my Smart Guides on, you can see there it says intersect and that means that the center line is intersecting. Now I know these are perfectly butting up right against each other. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna grab my selection tool um, excuse me, my direct selection tool, specifically the white arrow. And I'm just going to, I will zoom in to do this a little bit so you can see better. Again, A, the hotkey for the direct selection tool, the white arrow. And I'm just gonna click and drag over these two anchor points here in the center. I'll use the arrow key on my keyboard to sort of bump those down a little bit. Now, if I'm getting this sort of weird corner, that's fine. What I can do is I can select these two paths. I can come into my stroke panel and I'm just gonna turn on a round join for the corner. That's gonna kind of soften the corner and will help with any of those really sharp, jagged edges that you might get within your artwork. Once that's done, uh, I guess I can probably delete this one here that I had on the artboard to start with. I will, I'm gonna move this over a little bit to the left so that I have a little bit of space to make the pleat. So with these two paths um, and shapes selected, I'm going to, again, hold the Option or Alt key on my keyboard while using the selection tool this time, specifically the selection tool this time, the black arrow. Hold the Option or Alt key, click and drag until that intersects with the first set of pleats. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to leave those two pleats selected and I'm gonna come up to Object Transform, Transform again. Commander Control D is the shortcut and what it's going to do is it's going to do the same transformation that I just did, which was making a copy as I clicked and dragged and moving it over a specified amount. So with that next one still selected, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. So I'm gonna do this as many times until I get the number of pleats that I want and depending on the size of my skirt, that looks like it's probably gonna be enough. With my selection tool again, the black arrow, I will click and drag to select all of those. I will come up to object group. In order for this next technique to work, you do have to group the entire, um, all the individual pleat panels, we could call them, I guess. So object group, once they are grouped, I'm going to come up to effect, warp. And I know that I wanna choose arch, but you could really choose any one of these and then we'll browse through what they kinda do. Okay, so we'll choose that and as I click and browse through these with my preview on, you can kind of see what's starting to happen. The arc lower is not giving us a very dramatic result. Um, the bulge. You can change the size of this. What it's doing is it's warping the artwork, okay? Um, shell is giving you a really interesting look. You can kind of play around with these. I mean, that's really cool. That's a really interesting shape. That would have been crazy to draw manually um, to get all sorts of cool uh, shapes. But I want... Arc, I know I said earlier arch, I think I'm at arc. And I wanna go the other way. I wanna bend it, whoops, negative. There we go, got stuck there. 
Okay, now you can also change horizontal versus vertical. Definitely for this example, we want horizontal. But again, with your preview on, you can really do anything that you want. So we will push this as severe as we want it to be. We'll choose OK. And now you can see that your shape is drawn very quickly and easily. Let's move this knife pleat um, out of the way. Whoops. So we have a little bit more space to work. Now, this is an effect that is applied to your artwork. As you can see with my smart guides on, as I hover over each of these paths, these are still have their normal shape integrity to them. You can see this another way by turning on your outline preview. So you can come up to view, outline, command or control Y, and you can see that shows you where all your individual anchor points and paths are. The command or control Y toggling between that will show you what the actual um, anchor points and paths are versus if there's an effect applied to it, what it's you're getting. Now, all of your effects are controlled within the appearance panel. So if you ever want to come back in and edit this, whether you want to change the severity of the arc or you want to completely delete it, come up to window, open your appearance panel. And now if I select this skirt here, you can notice I have the warp arc applied to it. So I can maybe just turn it off if I want. I can click on this, which will open up the dialogue and I can change this if I want it maybe more severe or a little bit less. So it's this dynamic effect that is applied to your artwork that you can continually edit and change. Alternatively, you can also delete it right here with the delete um, with the trash can icon. Now, I actually think it looks great and I want to leave it as is, but I don't want it to be applied as an as an effect. I want the artwork, I want the paths to actually look, you know, come out at this sort of um, arced angle like they would be in reality for the skirt. So that's fine. I can expand the appearance as well. So with the skirt selected, I come up to object and I choose expand appearance. What that does is it releases that as an effect and now these are drawn as all individual paths. Now, once I save this document and I close it and I reopen it, I can no longer get that appearance back. Um, I could get it back right now because I could just do an edit undo, but once that's expanded, you kind of are going to consider it expanded forever. There's no coming back into the appearance panel and saying, oh, unexpand it. Um, you can't really go backwards that way, but that's fine. So here's your skirt. You'd then add your waistband and any other detailing and you're ready to go. All right, let's do one more example with the knife pleat here. Now the knife pleat, um, you have to kind of think, you've got to wrap, it's like solving a puzzle, trying to wrap your head around how to draw each of these. Um, but this is the cool trick for the knife pleat. You just are gonna draw one shape like we drew on the other one, and then this sort of shadow shape behind it that only extends about a halfway or two thirds, however deep your knife pleat is going to be. Now we actually are going to, Let's move this over here to the left. You're actually on the knife pleat. I'm gonna to wanna to stack these to the left based on the angle that the pleat is going and you'll see why in just a second. So I'm gonna zoom in here at the bottom, grab my selection tool, I'm gonna to select this. Okay, I'm gonna hold the option or alt key as I click and drag. And I can also hold the shift key so that I make sure I maintain my horizontal axis. With the smart guides on, it's pretty easy to maintain the axis, but just in case, um, hold the shift key while you drag so that that maintains. Now what I want to do is I want to line that, uh, I'll have to show you once I release the mouse, but I want to line this corner of this shape up with this corner of this shape because that is going to show a realistic knife pleat where the folds would kind of come. Okay, so I'll do it one more time here. So this corner of the gray shape, I ultimately, when I make the copy, I want to line it up with this corner of this white shape. So again, option or alt as I drag, and I can see now that's lined up, that looks good, now I can release. So the reason I was pulling to the left is because the stacking order is now correct. If I pulled this, um, let's just delete these two. If I pull this over to the right, whoops, the stacking order would be incorrect and then I'd have to do another um, object arrange send to back and it would just take a little bit more time. So let's do this. We'll drag this over to the left. Now once I've done one, again, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. Command or control D and that's just gonna duplicate that process that I just did. So we might need a few more for this pleated skirt. Uh, skirt. I do a lot of squirts, excuse me, I'm really used to saying the word squirt. Once I have that, I'm gonna select all of these. Again, I wanna group these. If I don't group them, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna come up to effect, and I can just choose this um, effect that I just applied, the one I've most recently applied. If it's not showing up, if you're just starting, choose warp, and then whatever effect you want. 
you're gonna turn your preview on. If I don't have them grouped, it's gonna apply the effect to each individual shape. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to apply the effect to the entire um, sketch as one continuous object. Not one continuous object, but one grouped object. So I'm gonna cancel out of that, group it, Commander Control G or Object Group. And then again, I want to do Effect Arc. Now you can see I'm getting the effect that I want. So we can again change the severity of this and I'll go ahead and choose OK, that looks good. Now, one thing that is cool is that I could then narrow this because the knife pleats are looking really, really thick by the time I kind of um, opened the arc up. So I can just come in here and I can squish this and that's gonna make my pleats a little bit narrower. So this is where you wanna be mindful of when you expand versus when you don't expand. When I have not expanded this yet and I have the ability to stretch this open and make it narrower. Once it's expanded, I mean, I still can, but it, it's not quite the same effect. I'm really kind of squashing the entire thing. So, you know, there's pros and cons as to when you want to expand versus when you don't. Um, what I often recommend people do is make a copy over just on the side of your artboard and leave a version of it in its unexpanded state with the effect still applied. And then you can come over here and you can choose object, expand appearance, and now you've got all your different shapes. You'd probably wanna fix this one. Um, as it were to wrap around the bodice, it would look a little bit, um, or wrap around the hip, it would look a little bit weird. And we got this really, really skinny up here. That's fine. You would just change the effect in your appearance panel right here to something perhaps a bit less severe. Choose OK, and I really just think it needs to be made a little bit wider. There we go. So you can see you have a lot of flexibility to adjust the uh, dimension of the pleats once you have applied the warp effect and then come in and edit each of them independently. So really great tricks to work with pleats in Illustrator and play around with the warp effects. They're really, really fun. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with them. Thank you so much for watching and the continued support, you guys. I am so Heidi. If you want more great material like this and tons of free file downloads and assets to help you become more proficient in Illustrator for fashion, take a look at my website and sign up for my email list. Visit SoHeidi.com, click on the yes, send me the free video or whatever offer it is I have right at that point in time. Input your email address and your first name and I will send you insider access to my content. Thanks again, you guys. So Heidi, I'll see you soon.